Hi, Kurt Bossart from Dennis and Yachting. We're just a few days away from the 2019 Fort Lauderdale Boat Show. I'm aboard one of my listings that's going to be in the show. It's a 118 Intermarine Tri-Deck Motor Yacht, and today I'm going to take you on a detailed walkthrough. You'll notice from some of the footage today, show management is busy putting the floating docks and piers together for what will be the largest Fort Lauderdale show to date. If you didn't know, the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show is the largest boat show in the world. She's 26 feet across the beam, with side decks both on the main deck and the upper deck, giving her a very large volume. One of the things that makes this yacht such a unique opportunity is the six cabins down below and the on-deck master, giving her a total of seven guest cabins. Although built in 1999, she was substantially refit just a few years ago. She had new Caterpillar C32A certs installed. She had a complete repaint of the exterior and new teak installed. As we have a lot to cover today, this is a large yacht, we're going to jump back onto the swim platform and get into it. To port and starboard, we have matching chandelier stairs, as well as shore power hookups to both sides. Because this is such a substantial platform, it can be used to stow a tender. Making it easy to deploy the tender from the back platform, there's a davit above stored in a transom. Center line on the platform is a hatch access to the lazarette, then into the engine room. In the lazarette, you'll find the Atlas shore power system, as well as the ship's laundry. Moving forward, we come to the engine room that houses the C32 Acert engines. We have two Northern Lights generators, 50 kW each. Also to starboard is a Haman sewage treatment plant. The yacht also comes with two water makers, allowing for a redundant system. Each engine has 1,550 horsepower, pushing the yacht at a comfortable cruise of 13 knots with a top end of 19 knots. At cruise speed, the yacht can obtain a 3,000 nautical mile range. Walking up the port staircase, we come to the back cockpit of the yacht, where we find a high-low dining table seating eight comfortably. Seeing how this area is completely covered by a molded hardtop, this is a great area to sit outside even during inclement weather. Noting the large commercial capstans to port and starboard, it's obvious this yacht was built to an industrial specification. Forward to starboard are stairs that lead up to the lounge deck. From here, let's step through these two huge glass doors into the main salon. You'll note as we step into the main salon, this yacht benefits from a recent interior refit. This includes, most notably, the hardwood floors you find throughout the yacht. The majority of the prefab interior was gutted and replaced with a comfortable L-shaped seating area. To starboard is a large TV facing the seating area. Forward of the L-shaped sofa, we'll find a formal dining table seating eight. To port from the formal dining area through a butler door, we find the commercial grade galley. In here, we find a pair of floor to ceiling fridge freezers, an electric stove, and a convection oven. There is a second access to the galley through a hatch on the port side to the side deck, which we're going to walk through to see the crew area. Stepping through this hatch on the port side, we come to the crew space. First, we're greeted by a comfortable crew lounge, seating four with a television. Moving down from the crew lounge, we come to the ship's second laundry setter, and finally to a private crew cabin. Jumping back into the salon, let's move forward on the starboard side to the main guest foyer area. In the foyer, looking to the left, we have stairs that lead up to the sky lounge, stairs that lead down to the guest cabins, and a guest day head. Facing outboard, we find the second formal entry into the yacht. 
Stepping into the owner's area, we're first greeted by an office. Passing the office through another door, we get to the master stateroom. The center line in the master stateroom is an aft-facing king bed. To the right of the bed is the owner's closet area. Also on the starboard side is a vanity area. On the aft bulkhead is a pop-up television. Wrapping around the left side of the bed is a comfortable seating area for reading, and forward of that is the owner's bathroom. In the owner's bathroom, we have his and her sinks, a separate shower stall lined with beautiful teak, as well as a separate stall with a head. Before we check out the other accommodations on board, let's step out the starboard side door and walk forward to the bow. In addition to new teak and a bench seat, we find her ship's bell and industrial size ground tackle. Because the builder was a commercial ship builder, you'll see that her lines are reminiscent of an ocean going vessel. From here, let's check out the rest of the guest accommodations on the lower deck. From the staircase leading back, we have two mirrored queen staterooms. In addition to queen berths, each has a television, hanging locker, and an ensuite bathroom. Moving forward through the hallway, we come to a second set of mirrored staterooms, each configured with twin side-by-side -side single berths. Even further down the companionway, we come to the final set of mirrored guest cabins, and they are configured with bunks. From the guest hallway, let's go up two decks to the Sky Lounge and the Bridge area. At the top of the stairs, turning to the right, we enter a cozy owner's Sky Lounge. The Sky Lounge has an L-shaped settee, a TV, and a small desk area. After the Sky Lounge, we step out onto the lounge deck, which is weather protected. To port, we find our third dining area, comfortably seating eight. Facing to starboard, we find the staircase leading up to the sun deck. Just behind the staircase is a sink and bar area with a refrigerator. Stepping out from underneath the enclosure, still on the Sky Lounge deck, we come to the sun pad and jacuzzi area. Additionally, this jacuzzi area is equipped with a pair of umbrellas, making it a great area to lounge in the sun. On the opposite side is a thousand pound davit that can lift a jet ski on and off the Sky Lounge deck. Stepping back into the Sky Lounge and moving forward brings us to the wheelhouse. Here in the wheelhouse are the systems that make this boat work, most of which I'm going to show you now. Starting to the left, we have the primary ship's radar. Next is the computer monitoring system. Midship centerline, we have the two Caterpillar digital engine displays. And further right is the larger Time Zero chart plotter. To the left of the wheel, we have a cluster of instruments consisting of a bow thruster, tiller control, VHF radio, and a depth sounder. Midship above the wheel, we have a gyro compass, an autopilot, and a rudder indicator. To the right of the wheel is the second VHF radio, and the Caterpillar controls. All the way to port behind the stid captain's chairs is a door leading to the private ensuite captain's stateroom. From the wheelhouse, we also have doors leading to port and starboard and two wing stations. What's unique about this yacht, for her size, is a Portuguese bridge that wraps all the way around four of the wheelhouse. 
After the Sky Lounge, in the enclosed area, we find a set of stairs that lead up to the final stop of our tour, the Yacht's Sun Deck. At the top of the stairs, to the left, we come to a sun pad with umbrella, offering you a second place to lounge in the sun. Forward to port is a small L-shaped dinette. Opposite the L-shaped dinette is a sink and a refrigerator with additional bar space. Center line forward is a helm station with two stid helm chairs. Thank you for joining me today on the Intermarine 118 Sky Lounge Motor Yacht. If you have any questions or you'd like to schedule a visit, please call me. We'll be at the Fort Lauderdale Show at the Las Olas Docks.